Hello everybody, Steve Griffiths here, developer of the MT Predictor software program. In today's MT Predictor video, I'd like to take a look at how the US e-minis unfolded yesterday, in particular looking at the micro NQ using our new trade station uh, data feed into our standalone MT Predictor 8. But as usual, we start with our risk disclaimer and just remind you that all examples in these videos should be considered as hypothetical. No trades are actually taken, they're just shown for illustration and trading purposes only. Remind you there's a risk of loss in trading and investing. We'll be looking at some losing trades in the video as well. As such, all trade decisions are your own sole responsibility. And no matter what trading approach you take, there always will be losing trades. It's important to understand and remember that. Right, this is a three minute chart of the MNQ you can see from yesterday. And I want to have a look at, in particular, this DP buy that caught the very bar of the low of the day yesterday. So it is MT Predictor a black box system. You can see we have setups on our charts. We have a trend indicator at the bottom. So do you simply take all the setups in the direction of the, of the uh, trend indicator color? Well, no, the reason you don't is because markets go in cycles. About half the time, markets are basically random. You can't really get any discernible pattern at all. And as such, you shouldn't be doing any trading. So of course the question comes then, how do you decide well the market is not random? Well, for this, we go to a higher time frame chart. So if you're trading on the three minute, you'd go out to the 15 minute. If you're, say, trading on daily stocks, you'd go out to a weekly. If you're, say, trading, say, an hourly Forex, you'd go out to the four hour, or maybe a four hourly Forex, you'd go out to the eight hour or daily. We then look to see where the markets are making reversals at our projected DPs. Now, we project these in advance. In other words, they're leading indicators. We don't just have a scanner running and have a uh, react to when a setup comes in a scanner, we try to be proactive. So I was using our training mode here, and I'm going to go back before yesterday even opened. <clears throat> so what we do is we project our DPs from previous highs and lows. So here's a previous low the day before. We right mouse click, we do decision point. You can see it projects on the chart. We have our typical area which is the area where most reversals happen. We also have a maximum DP. This is new in our um, MT predicted versions as of the last uh, couple of months. So let's see what happens now as the market moves forward. In fact, I'll just turn training mode off. If I turn training mode off, you can see the market opened. It went down to the typical, bounced back up again, but then came back down and then found the ultimate support at the maximum DP, the maximum level. So this nailed basically the reversal area in advance. Let's go down to our three minute chart and then see how we could have used that. There it is coming down to make an initial bounce off the, uh, the the typical area, but there were no setups there. Came back up, reversed down, but then look what happened. It carried on down, went through this typical zone, but then it made the ultimate low of the day right at our maximum. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that one off and just leave our maximum zone on. So how do we then decide on a uh, whether a trade is a good one to consider. Well, can you see how this DP buy here, if I perhaps take turning mode back to that level, they are, you see it came in at our hard time frame support. So that's what we deem by the, the picture becoming clear. It's when the market is making a shorter term setup at a higher time support and resistance zone. In other words, the market is making a reversal when the pattern becomes clear. It's doing what we anticipate on the higher time frame. Our MTP trend is agreeing with this. You can see because it's uh, uh, gray, so it shows it's in the process of making a reversal. Um, I'm now going to have a look with a slightly smaller account. We normally use a default account, which is 2% risk on a $20,000 account. Because I'm looking at the MNQ, the micro e-minis, I'm going to change that down to a smaller account, say a 10K account. So let's uh, put the analysis on this blue buy bar by right mouse click, doing analysis. This then does the position sizing to give us our initial risk. In this case, you'll be going along two contracts to risk $140, ignoring slippage and commission. We have our target on our chart there. And if the market gets up to that level, it would be a plus 4.8 R profit, not just in dollars, but we look at the profit in relation to the initial risk or the loss if the market goes wrong. So if it goes wrong, it would be a one R or one R uh, loss. If it goes right, it will be plus 4.8 R. So let's just turn training mode off and we see what happens. The market did indeed rally quite nicely. It rallied up, rallied up, rallied up until it got to the target there. Do you see that's where it hit the target where the profit of plus 4.8 R would have been available. 
So that was been a very, very nice uh, trade there. The market did make a couple of other trades a bit later in the day. There was another one, another buy set up there. If you'd taken that, that would have been a minus one hour loss. Remember I said that losses can and will and do unfold. The trick is keeping the losses small. So if you had have taken that one, that would have been a minus one hour loss. But remember the previous profit would have been plus 4.8 hour. So 4.8 hour profit is bigger than one hour loss. The last one here was a bit dubious because if you look closely, you can see that the market opened here and it would have gone down to below where the um, sell setup or the, the, the stop, protective stop would have been. So if I place the analysis on here, you can see it opened and it would have gone down to go below where the protective sell stop would have been before it came up and then entered the uh, buy stop. So in other words, when that happens, you would have cancelled your orders and the order would have been nullified. So this is why it's important to look at our history triangles as you have here to view them as potential trades or possible trades rather than actual failed trades. So in this case, this wouldn't have been a viable setup. So that wouldn't have been taken. So overall, a good day for MT Predictor yesterday and to show you how we use our higher time frame support and resistance areas. You can see there our maximum DP caught the, the low of the day nicely to then gauge when the picture is becoming clear. When the picture becomes clear, we then look for setups on our shorter term charts. We then look to trade in the direction of that new large degree trend confirmed by MTP trend indicator. We're then looking for trades that are large, not just in dollars, but in our units in relation to the losses that come through when um, the trades go wrong. By the way, there were some sell setups there, but you can see they were against a blue MTP trend. And obviously the uh, you're already in a long trade setup there and the large view trend was up. It was up. Now where was it up into? Well, if I go back to the 15 minute chart, that would have been the last swing to the low. So this would have been the pivot to project the anticipated um, resistance zone off. So we placed the decision point on there as well. And as you can see, the market did indeed go up to the typical WP, sorry, to the typical DP resistance zone there. So if I go back to the three minute chart, you can see that that would have been um, defining the larger trend is up, right up into that higher time frame resistance zone. So a good example of using MT predictor here. And just a reminder that this is actually using TradeStation data. <clears throat> so we're actually taking trade, uh, data from TradeStation using their, their web API and then plotting it in MT predictor, our standalone version in real time. So I'll just place that analysis on there at the end, just to remind you of that good trade setup. And again, an example here on the micro NQ, the, uh, the micro E mini, the NQ there, showing a slightly smaller account with a 2% risk on a $10,000 account. If you had even a smaller account, say a 5K account, again, that would have taken account of the position sizing there to keep your initial risk smaller and under control.